For those of you who don't know, Mike Keller is the father of Anna Duggar. Anna Duggar is the wife of now in prison Josh Duggar. I'm sure most of you have heard about the infamous Duggar family, but that's not what this video is about. It's about a foolish minister who's clearly out of touch with history and is close-minded about the pure facts of the black race. As a black man, his words are insulting and could it be farther from the truth? So without further ado, let's listen to this foolishness. 150 years ago, or 200 years ago, when the blacks were slaves, did they ever go to Washington, D.C. and have a rally 200 years ago to protest against slavery? Did they? No. What did they do? Well, a lot of good people in the plantations would say, hey, it's winter time. Let's ha let us help build a church for you, dear folks. And they loved them and taught them how to read so they can read the Bible. And here's what the blacks did about 150 years ago. They humbled themselves. They prayed. They sought God's face and they turned from their wicked ways. And God made slavery illegal through a several white presidents, right? It worked, didn't it? There's a lot to unpack here. First and foremost, slaves were not passive. Of course, many enslaved black people were submissive, but we were not weak. Many uprisings came about which ultimately led to our freedom, so I completely disagree with his nonsense. Resistance was a focal point at this time. We were willing to fight by any means necessary and continue to fight to this day. The many acts of resistance occurred alongside abolitionists, white and black. What we see as protests today was nothing like slave revolts back in the day. Some foundational elements were there, such as inequality and the like, but protests were on a whole different level. Unlike today, slaves had absolutely no rights. They were not even seen as human. The right to assemble, voice opinions, and demand change was not granted to enslaved individuals. Any form of protest often risked severe punishment or death. This, however, did not stop them from expressing their dissent in covert ways or using the Underground Railroad as a means to escape their bondage. The notion that plantation owners built churches and taught enslaved people to read as if it was some sort of righteous act is outright absurd. I don't want you to think that no slaves were taught to read, but let's not pretend that slave owners were proactive in ensuring that all enslaved people were on the same literary level as the white superiority. Many enslaved people taught themselves or were taught by others in secret. The purpose of the church in the plantation context was often to pacify enslaved individuals with religious teachings that emphasized obedience. The Bible was used as a tool to keep slaves under control and powerless. Prayers do change things, and I'm a firm believer in its power, but it took more than prayers for the enslaved to experience freedom. Actions accompanied their passionate prayers. It was the result of many factors, including the tireless activism of abolitionists, the political and economic tensions between the North and South, and the military success of the Union in the American Civil War. While several white presidents were indeed in power when slavery was made illegal, this doesn't erase the fact that the push for abolition was a combined effort of countless individuals, both black and white, who fought against the institution of slavery and the hatred back then. As a believer in Christ, messages such as this continue to drive a stake in this nation, which was founded on the principles of God. We clearly have seen over the years that man's heart is evil, and nothing will cleanse us from our sins but the blood of Jesus. As a black man, I will continue to stand proud and uplift what my people have endured over the centuries and will not be fazed by a foolish man using the Bible to justify the atrocities of the enslaved. With this being said, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, God bless, take care, and always strive to remain set apart.